Alright, second team rehearsals up. Quiet, please. And that's an action, second team. So this movie began, uh, or the road to this movie began when we got a call at the production office um, from an Orthodox Jewish woman from Borough Park, Brooklyn, and she said, I have an idea for a film. And uh, I met with her at a, at a cafe in Park Slope, Brooklyn, and she started telling me about this idea she had, which immediately was clear we couldn't do from a budget perspective. But then she started talking about her life and this friendship she had with a Muslim woman that she had met in the public school system. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe this could be a documentary or maybe a film. Once we had a script we liked, we sent it to some casting directors we know, and they had some time between casting Sopranos episodes, and they loved it and they decided to, to help us. And so we were lucky and we found, you know, these two great women who are our leads, Zoe and Francis, and, um, and just a, a wonderful supporting cast too. I don't know how this is such a surprise, but I think actors, you know, when they step into a, a, a scene and they make that thing come to life and they bring something that, that you just can't anticipate as a director or a producer or somebody who's thinking of a story, you know, they bring this other thing. And I think that we were all so moved by the talent and the range of, of our actors and the commitment um, to what the story was. Cut. Yeah, that's cut. Was this your first day on a movie set? Yeah. Was it different than you expected it would be? Uh, I don't think I had too many expectations, quite honestly. Can you have any sense of whether it went well or not? I think it went very well from my very experienced <laughs> point of view. No, I think uh, people seemed to know what they were doing. It was really organized. Um, people were really nice. Um, I don't know, it was fun. So our executive producer, um, Yetta Silverman, was involved all the way through. I mean, she came to us with a kernel of an idea. Um, she was instrumental in coming up with a story and then in you know, critiquing the screenplay. Um, she was there on set every single day, um, making sure that the Jewish world was real to her and thereby real to us in the audience. She's been with us all the way through this process and it's been great for us and I think also great for her because she um, you know, had no experience in film before. I think one of the many gifts of this production, and I think there were, really there were many gifts, is Yetta Silverman. Um, I think her being on set and her being there every day helped to create this authenticity that I don't think we would have had. Um, you know, we had to, while we were shooting in the Orthodox community, we were keeping kosher. We, could, we had to be done, you know, before sunset on Fridays. We couldn't work on Saturdays. Um, we had to adhere to, you know, a higher authority. <laughs> and I think that created a, a really interesting flavor on set where people knew that they were involved in something that wasn't typical. And I think, I think creative people like to know that they're involved in something that isn't typical. So we went into production with $120,000 and we knew that we basically could shoot for 17 days, that was as much as we could afford. And you know, so we, we tailored our script to, to make that work and, and our locations and uh, in true indie fashion we shot at you know, my apartment, Diane's apartment, Yetta's house and also at a school that her father had access to in New Jersey. You know, I don't think you can make this kind of film in 17 days without an incredibly dedicated crew who are willing to, you know, climb beams for you and go underneath houses for you and do things that a crew can do, but only when they have their own uh, investment in it. And I think that we were able to create a, an environment where everyone wanted to try to make the best film. Besides meeting a, a group of wonderful people, I'm astonished the way how everything is like a well-oiled machine. Like everyone knows exactly what his, ex they know what the expertise is, when they're needed and how they're needed and how they interact with everyone else without any confusion. The 
key to it, I think, was just doing a lot of planning and pre-production. And also Diane and, and Dan, the cinematographer, and myself, um, we've been working together for years. And so we knew what, you know, what, what coverage we wanted on the, each scene, and we had talked really extensively about you know, what we wanted to capture, and so we were pretty efficient. You know, she brought a lot to it in terms of her experience directing theater, and also because this is a film that's mainly about women's experience, she could bring things to it that I couldn't. And I had directed a feature before, so I had a little bit more experience working with a you know, cinematographer and a bigger crew. And so we really complemented one another. You know, so for Stefan and Dan, they could really take the time that they needed to make sure that everything was set and that we were ready when the actors were, were coming, that they were ready. And, you know, and I, and I spent a lot of time working with the actors, but also with the, you know, with the costume people and with the hair and makeup people to make sure that we were all ready and that we were, you know, because these are two different worlds that have to meet. And in a lot of occasions, you know, those two worlds can be very challenging of each other and very sort of provocative of each other. And so, you know, we kind of sliced and diced it and made it be that both of those, both of those entities felt as important as the other. So one thing we, were, we tried to be aware of was that we didn't want it to be this kind of heavy-handed message film because um, we generally feel like those films don't work so well. And so we, we just tried to have it be focused on a, this friendship between these two women One's Orthodox Jewish, one's Muslim, um, and then people can ex extrapolate from there because, you know, even when we were shooting the film, um, Israel was bombing Lebanon. So the cast and crew and, and ourselves, we were very aware of sort of the bigger themes and the geopolitical situation, but we tried not to have that be too central a part of our story um, because I think people know that. So this is a window into a um, a reality that can happen here in New York and hopefully can inform the broader discussion about peace, but we didn't want it to be a, a real message-based film. This is an American story and we're, and we're sort of saying, look at how these two worlds coexist, you know, in this city, in this country, in this place. And, and you can see, I think, as we tell the story, why these two women are, um, you know, interested in each other why they, uh, you know, want to be friends. And, and then it makes sense. It makes sense that these two people from these two cultures would have so much more in common than, than with the greater world around them. I think that really we, we wanted to, to give this picture and then let people sort of decide either how political it was or wasn't. And, um, and at the end of the day for us, it was more about friendship and about reaching over to each other and saying, I see you and I know you see me, so you know, how do we do this world together?